Yo, what is up guys, Ghost here, and today I'm going to be doing an updated version of my hotkeys, my in-game settings, and my key bindings for flying in the jets in Battlefield 4. I do already have a video out on this that was made about six years or so, but for the purpose of this video, it's going to be an update on that. Since a lot of new game settings have come out, a lot of new people have also started to play the game since then. Obviously, Battlefield 4 has seen somewhat of a resurgence since the demise of Battlefield 5. New players are picking up the game, and even some older players who used to play on console have now switched over to PC, and they've bought it like at a discounted price on Steam. So I'm going to do a quick guide here for how I play in the Jets because this is probably my most received question. How do I set things up in game? What are my hotkeys? What are my, my settings? And all that sort of stuff. So I'm going to go over that right here. Okay, so welcome here to the test range. Let's just start by getting the boring stuff out of the way, opening up the options. Um, we're going to go over everything in here that I change that really pertains to to flying the jet specifically. Uh, so first thing you're gonna notice here is vehicle mouse sensitivity. That is set to 20% and I do use mouse DPI setting of 1600 DPI. So you may use something different. I'm not exactly sure how this percentage bar here relates or multiplies with your DPI setting. If you guys know more about DPI and mouse sensitivity settings from other games like Counter-Strike, I'm sure the same thing can be applied in BF4, but I'm not really a whiz when it comes to that sort of stuff. So if you don't use 1600 DPI and you use like 800, sorry, maybe you can just double this to 40%. I don't know, but basically this is what I use. Raw mouse input on, no mouse acceleration in Windows, of course. Uh, vertical flight. I like to have inverted. It says here it only pertains to helicopters, uh, but just to be sure, I recommend doing that. In any case, it's probably what you want to have for actually flying the helicopters as well. All right, moving over to gameplay. Uh, vehicle boost, you probably want that as hold button. You can have it as click button. So the vehicle boost in question is basically your afterburners. I prefer to just have that as hold, just hold on the shift key for however much you want to use your afterburners and you'll be good to go there. Let's have a look, is there anything else here that's really important? Let's check advanced options. Oh yes, of course, jet chase camera roll. Uh, this one's really personal preference. I prefer to have this off at the moment. If you go and check my old videos, you'll notice sometimes I've had them on. Part of the reason I have them off is because people who watch my videos said that they were actually getting sick. What this basically will do is decide whether the third person camera rolls with your jet or not. So basically, do you want the horizon to be turning as you turn the jet? One of the reasons I like to have it off is because it's just easier to see once you're level with the ground and sea level in order to come in for a new strafe. And once we get up in the air, I will, I'll show you guys that, what I'm demonstrating here. Jet auto throttle, I have this as on. What it will essentially do is make your jet fully accelerate when you're not touching any of the keys. So you don't need to hold down W to accelerate really, your jet will mainly do this by itself. And this makes speed control much easier because you can just simply tap S to reduce your speed and throttle down a little bit to keep your speed at the magic number of 313. Coming down here to the minimap settings, I have my minimap set to 175%, which is incredibly handy when you have the air radar in the jet, it just means that you're gonna be able to see jets from much further away since your map is that much bigger. It's also, you know, a little bit more in your face in game. So when a big red blob of an enemy stealth jet or an attack jet pops up on there, it's gonna be quite obvious and you're going to notice it better than if it were just the regular default little circle. If we come down here to the helicopter and jet pilot hood, I like to have the glow in the jets on 200%. Um, that is so whenever you're flying towards the sun, you're still going to be able to see your aiming reticle and your speedometer, um, that sort of thing, without the sun actually like blinding you and essentially blocking everything in your hood. I have green 100% here and uh, the red and blue components at 12. And the warning, I like to keep that just as a solid red because I'm just used to that. But of course, you can use whatever colors you prefer. Uh, another important one down here is the enemy hood world icons. You can see I've cranked that all the way up to 140% and I've got scale with distance on to 50%. So 
basically whenever you spot infantry on the ground and you're strafing, they're going to have a pretty large Dorito above their heads. And generally speaking, if you aim just below the end of the Dorito or the tip of the Dorito or the triangle, whatever you want to call it, then you're going to be lining up a pretty decent shot to kill that infantry player. So the larger the Dorito, the easier it is to aim right at the corner there. All right, moving over to video options, field of view here. I have this the same for, you know, as a soldier on foot, as I do in the vehicles, 105. A lot of people prefer to crank this up to 111. Honestly, in terms of, of gameplay, in terms of being the best you can in the jets, I would say the best setting is to just crank it all the way up to the maximum because that's going to give you the widest field of view and when you're dogfighting you're going to be able to see the enemy jet right on the edge of your screen, you know, if you're like looping around trying to catch the guy. Maybe you guys are going to be able to see him whereas if I've got mine set to 105 he may just be out of vision for me but it's also a personal preference thing. I just think at 111 it looks kind of fish-eyed and just a bit silly really so I think 105 for me is a nice compromise. If you guys want to go and turn that up to 111, then feel free to do so. Motion blur amount, definitely you want this at 0%. As you can imagine, there is a lot of motion when you're flying a jet, so that's going to just really blur everything and make it hard to find targets. And then over here on the fidelity side of things, you really want mesh quality on ultra. You know, I have pretty much everything on high and mesh quality on ultra, but the mesh quality is probably the most important one. That's essentially like, not like your draw distance, but where things are actually going to pop in. Um, the higher the setting, I think the sooner they will pop into existence based on your distance from said item, which is usually a tank you're aiming at or whatever. After all, this game did come out in 2013, so even if your PC isn't top-notch, uh, you should really be able to use Mesh Quality Ultra without too much of a performance hit. All right, key bindings, the good stuff. Let's hop over to the Jets here. Now, most of my key bindings are default, but there are a couple of important ones here. So, Pitch Down and Pitch Up, you'll notice I have bound uh, Pitch Down to Left Alt. So, essentially, if I hold Left Alt, it's going to make my jet go downwards if I'm you know, completely level, and if I hold spacebar, it's going to pitch me up and turn the jet vertically upwards. And the main reason for this, both of these hotkeys, in fact, is because, as I will show you guys in a minute, you don't want to be scrolling your mouse over your entire mouse pad again and again and again, having to constantly pick up your mouse when you're in the middle of a dogfight. Holding down this hotkey here will pitch your jet up to the maximum degree regardless of any sensitivities or anything like that. And that means you can actually keep your mouse sensitivity on the settings that I just showed you, which is significantly lower than you would want for actually turning the jet, and that allows you to aim uh, much better. So here, roll left and right, that's normal. After burner, left shift, toggle chase camera is C. Those are all default. D -d 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 fire. And uh, normally, I think this is defaulted to the spacebar. You probably want to go here and remove that spacebar key binding. Otherwise, every time you pitch up, you're also going to fire whatever weapon you have equipped. And um, that can get quite annoying. Switch weapon is F as default, countermeasures X. Another good one here is enter and exit vehicle. I like to use B. You don't have to use B, but I recommend not using E because it's just so close to WASD that you can very easily you know, fat finger the E button and just bail out of your jet mid dogfight as you're frantically trying to gain some ground on the enemy pilot. So like I said, don't use B if you don't want to, but I found that to be a key a key that uh, I could easily find. Now scoreboard, you're going to notice I have changed to M and the main reason for that is because I like to use tab here for the full map. Normally, as default, scoreboard is on tab and the full map is on M. So basically, I just switch those two keys around. Using the full map in the jet is incredibly important. It allows you to see lots and lots of targets that aren't 3D spotted within game. They're just 2D spotted within the map. Um, and you generally can get a great overview of the battlefield. And if you guys have watched my footage, you'll see me switching on, on and off the full view map all of the time. So I really recommend putting that on tab. In any case, it's not like you really need to see the scoreboard and it's like critical information that you need to see. 
that you so much so that you need to have it bound to tab right so why not just have it as m i think most of us only look at the scoreboard when we're dead between lives anyway so uh that's what i like to do there we want to check the uh, helicopter settings as well just in case you're interested in scout helicopter stuff everything here is pretty much default i don't change a single thing except the scoreboard again as m and the full map as as tab i actually use these settings for on foot in vehicle like absolutely everything any battlefield game i play the first thing i go and do is put the full map to tab and i really recommend doing that okay guys so here we are in the air i'm going to show you guys a couple of examples of why i use these settings so i shall see i've got a little uh, keyboard and mouse on screen there just so you guys can see properly what i'm doing so first of all pitching up if i hold spacebar this is what pitch up does it essentially turns my jet upwards like this right and if i hold left alt it pitches my jet downwards and this is incredibly handy right if you just want to use the mouse button um i'll show you what that what that kind of looks like so this is me here just scrolling i'm just kind of well i'm doing a really bad job but actually it was speed control because this is just really weird for me to do um, but I'm basically just holding down S here and I'm constantly dragging my mouse across the mouse pad. This is just really, uh, really difficult to do. And you can see that I'm kind of turning my jet a little bit left and a little bit right because every time I put my mouse back down on the pad, I'm not exactly getting it in the exact same position. Now, if we just hold spacebar here and do our speed control this way, you can stay in the exact same straight line that you want to which is just really really nice a lot of people say why do you bother using pitch up because it's not like you really need to pitch up in dogfighting uh, i don't really use pitch up in dogfighting but let's say there's a target right below me here this is what i like to use pitch down for if i want to just literally go and straight straight down at the ground like right over there uh pitch down on left alt is pretty amazing for that if you're not used to it it does take a bit of getting used to but if you're like oh my god there's like a target right down there you know you can maybe get time to strafe him and then just pull up out of your strafe whereas if you don't have that bound to pitch up then you're gonna have to come around and it's just gonna waste you more air time and again here this is the tab key that i like to use for the full map as you can see um all those guys down there that are not spotted in game they are spotted in here. Obviously, this is just the test range, but you get the point anyway. You know, it's just really nice to be able to have all of these extra cameras and, and ways of spotting enemies. You know, use your rear view camera, use your, your right click camera in the cockpit here to look out the sides of the jet and use your map to spot targets. You know, that's what I like to do. I see that rib boat down there. I'm like, okay, get rid of my map, coming around, and then you can go and spot him right down there and, and, and strafe him. All right, guys, so that concludes this jet tutorial. It's a long time since I've said that. In any case, I hope you guys found this one useful. Leave me any comments down below if you're unsure of anything or you need any more help with jets or anything like that. I'm always happy to answer people. Don't forget to leave a like as well if you found this one useful. And feel free to subscribe because I do still upload Battlefield 4 along with other content. Have a good one, guys, and I'll see you next time.